Okay, let's go to Pedro. Hey, was that Hacksaw on the MLB Network? That was Hacksaw uh, with Chris Mad Dog Russo talking Padre baseball. Uh, that was on short notice. They contacted me and said, hey, we're doing something kind of creative right now because of what happened with Otani, what happened with Soto. Would you join us? So, yeah, I did about 12 minutes with Mad Dog, and it was really fun, and we buzzed through an awful lot of angles, and they they like it. Every once in a while, maybe a couple, three times a year, they call me and say, hey, would you come on to MLB? And, of course, Dog and I go back a long, long time. Yeah, I was going to say, he must be one of the pioneers, just like you were in sports media back in maybe the 80s and 90s. Right? Mike and the Mad Dog was the star show on WFAN in New York. Mm. Uh, Mike Francesa, Chris Russo. Uh, that was like a love-hate relationship. That was old guy, young guy. It was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. They started in August of 87 at WFAN. I started in August of 87 at Extra 690 in San Diego. So we have paralleled right down on. the road. And Dog... Dog's got a great second career, what he's done on satellite radio. Now, obviously, what he's doing on MOB. But yes, that was I. Hope you didn't spill your coffee when you saw me on TV. Yeah. All right. Hacksaw. Uh, this is from Angel. He says, Gliber Torres would have been a great fit for the San Diego. Even with Soto traded, the Padres should be okay. They still have the bats. They, they just need healthy arms. Well, they don't have a left fielder. They don't have a center fielder. They're down at least one frontline starting pitcher, if not two. And they still have depth problems in the bullpen. So I'm not going to say they're going to be fine without Juan Soto. I just don't think they got the right players in the deal. When you go back and if you look at the laundry list of names I gave you at the top of our podcast, those guys were all featured in the box scores the back third of the season. And they didn't get any of them. They got the next tier. Next tier might be okay, but they might not be. Yeah. I mean, I, again, it's a big question, but it's only one year of Soto. So it's not like we could have gotten the King's ransom for him. Um, but what do you think? Maybe what are they going to do with Jake Cronenworth? Because do you think he would pick up an outfield glove and play left? That's one of the alternatives. Uh, I don't know how they can trade him. I don't know who wants to take on that contract. The, the seven-year deal kicks in now mm -hmm. at $10 million per season. For a guy to hit two twenty nine. Mm. you know, and the other issue is, oh, you're going to trade Cronenworth? You have to pay half the salary? How is that a good use of what limited money A.J. Preller has? Exactly. No, I concur with you. I I thought the same thing drinking coffee this morning. Why not just give Cronenworth a glove? He's such an athlete who's a grinder. Maybe make him a center fielder. He'll go chase fly balls. Well, Tatis will field. play center, don't you think? No, they're saying Tatis is going to be in right. Really? Yeah, but so Cronenworth might might be a steady guy to play in one of the outfield positions, but you still got to go get more players and how they're going to get, go get more players. Next question. Next question. Okay, let's go to Steve here. Hacksaw, what do you make of the Ducks collapsing lately? Do you think they'll be competitive or be in the draft lottery at the end of the season? Lottery, baby. I mean, you you can't project injuries. You know, we all thought Drysdale, the defenseman, coming off the major shoulder surgery, he got hurt really early last year. He played really well his first year as a 19-year-old. Okay, star back there on the blue line, gets hurt again. Second game of the season, gone. Zegras, Zegras is so crafty, so good, gets hurt again. He's gone, and they're not disclosing the extent of the injuries, but Jamie's been down since October. Zegras has been out since, I want to say, early November. So it just they just don't have enough players around them, and, you know, San Diego goals weren't playing very well until the last week, and the goals have just kind of, made it come together. They went ahead, 13-game winless streak. They were just terrible. They could not score any goals. Now, some of their guys are starting to put the puck in the net, and the goals have played a little bit better hockey, but they're still in a huge hole in the standing. So, yeah, I think I think Anaheim's going to be a lottery team, and we would hope they'd have some good luck in guys who would finally get healthy because they're wasting away the career of John Gibson, the goaltender. What's your take on uh, the, the draft pick Carlson? Is he living up to expectations? Yeah, and and they're spotting him. I'm, I'm really surprised. He's not playing every night, every shift, like Connor Bedard, the number one pick, is playing. He's got seven goals, though. And for a 19-year-old at this level, mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive. I mean, he's a power player. And you give him a, 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 a full year in NHL weight training and diet help, if he can stay free of injuries, that's a power forward for a long time to come. So that's a really good pick. Okay, let's move on here, and let's go to John. He says, a year from now, when Soto signs with the Mets, how will you judge the trade? Well, I don't think it's a win-win trade. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to the Mets because I don't know that the Yankees will let him go. I'm, I might be in the minority, and uh, sometimes I am, but most times I'm not. 
Uh, <laughs> Yankees will pay the price. There'll be some expiring contracts at Yankee Stadium. They'll pay the price to Scott Boros because they always have paid the price. It was it was interesting. I'm trying to think who made the comment about Yankee baseball. Um, it was Brian Cashman who said a lot of strange things this offseason. He invoked a George Steinbrenner phrase. If you're a great ball player, you should be playing in New York. Yeah. Right. So he invoked that <laughs> that comment as they were making yeah. the announcement about the acquisition of Soto. So uh, I, I think the Yankees, if it turns out to be Yankee Met bidding war, so be it. But I think the Yankees paid that price to get him and they, they gave away some talent. I didn't I don't think they gave away a ton of talent. Uh, but the Yankees did not get him for a one year rental. And I'll be fascinated to see because there's a lot of public pressure and club statement pressure on Giancarlo Stanton that he needs to be in the lineup every day. Oh, yeah, yeah. He has been so banged up and so hurt. So there's a whole conditioning thing about him. But, boy, that's a pretty good batting order. Oh, you yeah. go, oh, geez, you got Stanton, and now you add into it Soto, and you got Judge. That's not bad. Yeah, but, you know, it's like they have their own Fab 3 or Fab 4. But who knows? You can't predict what's going to happen. I mean, I mean, look what Baltimore did last year. Um, but it is funny that they're interviewing Soto and they're all saying, hey, what do you think about staying with the Yankees? And he's playing it coy again. Yeah, call Scott Boris. Yeah, exactly. But so. he did say one thing was really intriguing. And he didn't demean Petco Park, but he took a shot. You know, 23 of his 35 home runs were on the road, mm. not at Petco. He says, I can't wait to see the right field porch at oh, Yankee yeah. Stadium. Boom. He's going to hit some home runs. Boom. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to Dave talking about the Angels. To be fair, the Angels couldn't do any big moves until Otani signed. They have more young talent on the roster than you give them credit. N Nito, Moniak from Carlsbad, high OBP, Seanel, not so bad. They've got some good young players. I concur with you. Moniak is a journeyman who's finally found his career after struggling all those years. They just don't have enough pitching. That's a big issue. Yeah. Have they got, they've got four starters that all be fourth or fifth guys on somebody else's club. And you're asking Patrick Sandoval to be your ace. I don't know that they have enough right now. They do have budget space, but the price of pitching has rocketed to the point that the Michael Walkers and the Nick Martinez of the world are making $15 million a year, which to me is crazy money for a back of the rotation guy. I just don't know where they're going to be able to go get more pitching. You know, unless there's something that's hidden in that farm system, uh, because that two years ago they drafted 21 pitchers, all 21 of their picks were pitchers. Mm. Unless somebody is going to make this next jump, I just don't know outside of Reed Detmers that they've got an ace on that staff. And I don't even know Reed Detmers at BYU is the ace on the staff. So we'll see. I mean, spring training does not open a week from Monday or the day after Christmas. So the Angels still have time to find a way to go get pitchers, but. What, what they've gotten so far doesn't excite me. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a huge question mark. But I'm I'm rooting for Moniac, you know, the local kid, Carlsbad. I remember he was playing at, at um, was it Carlsbad or La Costa Canyon? I think it was LCC. When my son was playing at Poway High. And when he was at the game, there were tons of scouts there. Oh, from, yeah. From not just from colleges, but from MLB teams. It was like a circus. It's a high number one pick. Well, number one overall. Didn't hit. Didn't hit. Now, he got, it, it was strange. He bounced around, and he got to Angel Stadium, and it was like a light bulb went on. And maybe that's just a maturity factor of how to approach handling major league pitching. But he played pretty well for them. So maybe maybe that's a nice free agent acquisition. But But star status, no. No, no, no. Well, we'll see what he does. He'll have the opportunity to play. Hey, here's one from Brett. The Dodgers should sign Snell and Hader just to piss off Padre fans even more. Well, they had a four-hour meeting with Yomamoto uh, and all the Dodger big hitters. And I'm not talking about the front office. I'm talking about the players took part in that meeting and a tour. The Dodgers, I don't know if you heard this story, the Dodgers shut down Elysian Way the road that goes into the parking lot. Hmm. They shut down their Dodger store for a whole day. No Christmas shoppers allowed up near the stadium as they were given a tour to Otani uh, for the yeah. meeting. So it's, I mean, the Dodgers, Dodgers, they could go get Yamamoto. Now I, I heard that Yamamoto's agent has asked for a 10 year deal. I don't know very many people that are given any pitcher a 10 year contract. You know, maybe I'd give them five years and an options after that. 10-year 
contract. I know he's only 25, but 10 year contract for a pitcher. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, it's funny the talking about closing access to Dodger city, but isn't that stadium just the biggest pain in the butt to get in and out of when there's traffic? Yeah. Oh, it's just horrible. Um, but you know, it's kind of cool that Freeman and Mookie and, and, you know, even Kershaw were there to kind of grease the palms or kind of move the process along. Um, but you know, I mean, the Dodgers are just loaded and they've got more money and they did this creative thing where the AAV is a lot different than it should be. I mean, yeah, it's a loophole, but they exploited it. Well, the Dodgers seem to have more money than God. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, maybe <laughs> except to me, the Yankees, we'll find out. Okay. Moving on down the list. This is a comment about the matter story. This is from Tracy. She says, stop believing women automatically. Wait until all the facts come out. Too many guys get their lives ruined based on lies. Well, I concur, although you must defend the honor of the woman. Uh, I don't think you can make a broad brush statement that you can't trust what the woman says. That's not very fair, uh, not very legitimate. You know, and the other active part to this conversation is Ariza did something stupid. When your whole career is in front of you with this great reputation of what you accomplished as a football player, and you do something stupid because you might have been drunk at a party. And I don't care if it was consensual or not. You put yourself in a bad situation. Was it a money grab? I've talked to people that think it was nothing more than a money grab. Mm. Um, but now the lawsuit against the other four players that this woman has filed, that's still active. But the Arisa thing is not. So I, I, I think the kid... Kid got screwed. He got screwed by the NFL. When you look at the makeup of NFL rosters and how many players are on active rosters making big money who've been involved in a lot of stuff off the field, real serious stuff. Now, I grant you, gang rape is a serious thing. Consensual sex with an alleged minor, that's a stupid thing. But when you look at all the guys on NFL rosters and guys have been suspended, I mean, for the whole wide variety of things off the menu that they did, whether that's steroids or whether that's domestic abuse or whether that's guns or whether that's cocaine, they served whatever sentence and they're back in the league. This kid never got a chance and he was never, never indicted, never charged. They held it against him. He was being sued. Bad. He just got a bad end of a deal. He's going to, he'll push this behind him. Somebody will give him an opportunity to kick. And I really believe the story will eventually go away. But it cost him two years of his career. Yeah, huge. Well, I mean, remember the Rams had that guy that um, killed a, a woman. Leonard Little, linebacker, yeah, drunk driving drunk, death. Exactly. And he got back in the league. Um, so, uh, but isn't it interesting in society how the pendulum will swing too far one way or the other? Like for the longest time, women were being abused and raped in these cases and no one would believe them. And they had no way to get retribution. Then the me too movement happened and yep. it swung all the way the other way. And it was believe woman, no matter what. Now it seems we're getting to a rational place where it's all about facts and doing the investigation and then applying justice properly. Two years, yeah. two years to accomplished that he wasn't guilty of anything except being st a stupid senior at San Diego state. Yeah. That, that was, that was, that was a bummer. No doubt. We move on. We move on. Okay. Here's a good one here. This is from Molly. She says, Lee Axel Hamilton. When are you going to have Scott Kaplan on the show? Two San Diego radio legends would be my ultimate Christmas gift. Well, that'd be kind of cool. You know, he's obviously doing stuff in Los Angeles. And when we do our podcast, he's on the air yelling at people in L.A. about Otani's arrival and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, we'll have to just try to work it. And he said, well, I'll have you on my podcast. But he's, he hasn't followed up on that. But, uh, hey, what we're doing works here. So we'll keep doing it the way we're doing it. Glad you enjoy it. Yeah, so Kaplan, he's he's terrific. I like his show and his guys that are on his team. No accounting for bad taste. <laughs> All right, let's go to Pedro. He says, Lamont Butler, you know, San Diego State, not helping carrying the weight with Jaden Ledee having a breakout year. Safe to say Butler is a one-shot wonder? Well, he's not playing right now through the, the first 10 games of the season as well as he played last year. Uh, you know, and then you add into that fact that, you know, Darren Trammell was hurt with a shoulder issue and he's just starting to come back. I, I think the whole thing at San Diego State, the success of their season, granted, I think Ledea is one of the best players on the West oh, Coast. Amazing. Uh, but I, I think the, the growth of the season has to come from consistency from Micah Parrish. 
if they can get the big four to drop threes on a consistent basis, and he works hard, but if he can be a scorer, complemented by Reese Waters, the Southern Cal transfer, who's played really, really well, you know, that that collection will carry them. And then ho- hopefully we're going to see Butler come back, and then obviously Trammell gets to 100% health, and by the time we get to the Mountain West Conference, once we get through the Gonzaga game on the 29th, then we'll start playing the conference games, which are critically important. Hopefully by that time, Dutcher is going to have every component locked in to their responsibility, but they played poorly. While you were gone drinking Puerto Rican <laughs> rum, they almost lost to UCSD, yeah, which was my a alma shocker. mater. And they almost lost to Cal Irvine. Right. So, And and uh, there was one other game that came real close there at the yeah. end, too. So um, but just as an aside, I can't believe that UC San Diego took the runner-up of the national championship, D1, to the final seconds of the game. Was when I went to school there in the 80s, they were Division three. 14, point, 14 minutes without a point. That's San Diego in, State, it was 14 crazy, minutes. Crazy. But, you know, I don't worry about Lamont Butler. He's going to be fine. His defense is great. He's a leader. He's going through a slump. It's going to come back. But Ladee, I mean, this guy is potential player of the year. I yep. mean, this guy's amazing. You agree with me, though, that Parrish is really the intangible one that has to score on a night-by-night basis? Yeah, and he's shown it. He, yep. he and He's really showing it, and a lot of grit underneath the basket, too. But I, I personally think it's the bench has to set, step up. And Jay Powell had a really good game last time. We need more of those bench players to come in because that was the secret ingredient last year. Okay, a couple more here. A couple more, and this is going to be here from Neil. What is the Pac-2 going to do with scheduling for all the other sports? Well, I think you know, in the conference, they have, they've not solidified what Oregon State, Washington State basketball will look like going forward. But I would assume that the Cougars and the Beavers are going to wind up playing every team in the Mountain West once, once the Pac-12 folds or goes those 10 schools leave. Now, maybe they'll, they'll continue to schedule UCLA or USC and some of the other schools. But I, I would think there'll be a basketball alliance, much like there is a football alliance. Now it's a bit of a challenge because you're talking about scheduling a total of 32 games. Where do you go? Yeah. If you if you're not going to have 20 conference games that are going by the boards, or will they keep that relationship with the schools on the West Coast? Maybe they will. Yeah, I mean they got to do something. I mean, well, even like Brian Dusher says that you know ba- uh, NCAA sports are regional, and it needs to be that way. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't be sending the women's golf team to play you know, on the East coast. So hopefully they'll work it out. I mean, the mountain West merger and rescheduling that way just makes too much sense. They've got to do it that way. Right. What's wrong with it? You're criticizing SC and UCLA sending a women's golf team to go play <laughs> Maryland. That doesn't make any sense. College park. And, and besides UCLA was like, so cash strapped and sure they're going to get all this money for the football team, but I don't even know if the whole thing's going to pencil out. Time will tell on the rest of it. Let's see what happens with the football thing first. Okay, let's get like one or two social medias in here before we wrap it up. Hey, here's a Chargers Raiders comment. This is actually a comment from your website, Lee. People writing about your articles that you write. And this is from Chris. He says, TJ Simers penned the phrase Spanos goofs to describe the Bolts owners. They live off the goodwill of Kroenke while the San Diego market has become a wasteland. Meanwhile, Oakland has devolved into a pit of progressive politicians losing three teams. Financially, Davis has built a legend in Vegas. He has two WNBA championships and seems to have a clue about the future. Time will tell if these teams can rebuild. The loser on Thursday is actually the winner. Well, the winner obviously helps himself in terms of the upcoming NFL draft. I hate to say tank it, but maybe the Chargers should just tank it mm. and get high, more high picks. Well, they need help. They need help, and they need some good luck. You know, I don't know, and if we get to the end of the season, we'll express opinions about Brandon Staley. And, you, you know, people say, don't use ex- injuries as an excuse. No, but it's an explanation. You know, his quarterback has now had three major injuries in two seasons and has tried to play through it hurt. He's not the same quarterback right now. That's an issue. He had one year where he lost virtually his entire offensive line. He had another year where he lost virtually all the key components on the defensive side of the football. And now his third year, his quarterback has played hurt and now it's finally gone down with a significant injury. So those injuries may well be a piece of the equation as to why they're 24 and 24 under Brandon Staley and why they've been so, so disappointed. And I'll, I'll disagree with Chris. Mark Davis hasn't done crap 
to prove he's a responsible, intelligent NFL owner. Yeah, okay, so he's got the Las Vegas Aces WNBA. That doesn't mean anything in the spotlight of owning a franchise that has just been pitiful in the National Football League. And he was gifted that stadium and all this money, and they got they got a lot of work to do. I was on, on a Raider station talk show yesterday, and they're not happy with me in Vegas at all because I'd written some really condemning columns on my website about Mark Davis and, and the late Al Davis and what the franchise evolved into. So. Chargers got issues. We'll see what happens within four weeks' time. Raiders got major issues. That junk's been going on since they were in the black hole in the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mark Davis is like a cartoon character yeah. in a lot of ways. I mean, so, yeah, whoever loses this will probably be in a better, better position. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll be watching the game. You're going to hang out here and watch it, right? And it'll be nice to see, you know, just how you know, it's a historic rivalry. But it's a shell of what it used to be. Plain and simple, we hope you have enjoyed our Hacksaw's Headlines podcast.